Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean Mitchell, Denver real estate agent with Co-Listings. And in this video, I wanna talk about three key sections of the exclusive right to buy listing contract that will help you negotiate the best agreement possible between you and your buyer's agent. So let's dive in. The reason why this contract should be important to you is because it defines the agreement between you and that buyer's agent and probably more importantly, what the duties are of that buyer's agent to you. And I guess I should clarify that this is Colorado's exclusive right to buy listing contract. If you're watching this video from another state, it may vary. So just keep that in mind that each state has their own variation of this contract. Now the entire contract is important and I would not rely solely on what this video highlights. So if you have any questions, I would recommend talking to your buyer's agent or someone that you trust that can give you specific insight into your questions about any other parts of this contract. The first section that I wanna highlight is the listing period in 3.6. This basically is the contract term between you and that buyer's agent. It's the agreement that the two parties agree on to work exclusively together to buy a house. In most situations, it takes between three and six months for the typical buyer that I work with to find a house. So I'll usually do a term length between three and six months. It is good to keep in mind though that some agents will ask for a longer duration. If you intend on negotiating a shorter time period from let's say three months, I would make sure and have a really good reason why you want to shorten that time frame. The first option that I think is probably the most likely for an, a real estate agent to accept is a let's say 30 day time frame with the option for that contract to be extended automatically, if not canceled, before the end of that 30 days. What this does for you is it gives you a chance to feel out that agent to make sure that both parties are going to work well together and it gives an incentive for that agent to work really hard and prove him or herself during that first 30 days. If you're sitting down with this buyer's agent and the trust level is already built there, a three to six month is probably a good place to start. Or you could do something longer if you have specific ideas on what you want that next house to look like. The next sections that I'd like to touch on are section five and section six. Section five talks about the brokerage, the office, the real estate office's duty to you. And section six talks specifically about the agent's duty to you. These duties are all designed to help protect you and make sure that the agent is looking out for your best interest. And to more accurately summarize the purpose of these sections, the brokerage and the agent working with you has a legal fiduciary duty to make sure that you are protected and your interests are represented. If you feel that agent is not looking out for your best interest, you can always go back to section five and six of this agreement because you may have a breach of contract if that agent is not fulfilling those duties. Which means that if you're in the middle of a contract term and the agent is failing to fulfill those duties obligated as written in section five and section six, you may have a way to terminate that contract based on not fulfilling those duties. I had one client recently who had some serious resistance to signing the exclusive agreement to work together for, I think it was maybe three months. She had a bad experience in the past with an agent that she worked with in that the agent was not doing his duty to represent and work for her. She felt trapped and she felt locked into this contract. But what she didn't realize is that this contract actually gives her a way out if that agent is not performing those duties. So just keep that in mind as you're working with your buyer's agent. The next section is section seven, compensation to the brokerage firm. This basically dictates how your buyer's agent is going to get paid. This is important to your agent because your agent works off of 100% commission. Now the good news is that in most cases, the seller and the listing agent pay the buyer's agent's commission, which means that you most likely will not have to pay 
that commission. There are a couple of scenarios that you should definitely keep in mind and talk to your buyer's agent so that you understand how they will be addressed. The first section, 7.1.1, explains what the buyer's agent is charging for their services. Now this can vary from high to low, but in many cases, it's somewhere around 2.5 to 3% that the buyer's agent gets paid to help you find your next home. The other section that I would pay really close attention to is 7.3, which is who pays that commission. Now in most cases, the seller and the listing agent are paying the buyer's agent's commission or fees, which means that you most likely do not have to pay that. Section 7.3.1 states the listing brokerage firm or seller may pay, buyer is obligated to pay. The reason why the buyer's agent would select this box is that it guarantees that that agent will get paid regardless of the situation. There are some situations, though few and far between, that would require where the seller would not be paying a commission to the buyer's agent. It's important to know these two typical scenarios so that you understand how to handle them if you get into that situation. The first situation is if you or your buyer's agent find a house that is not listed on the multiple listing service, also called the MLS, and is being sold by the actual seller with no agent representation. In some cases, the seller may be savvy enough to offer a commission to the buyer's agent in order to attract as many people as possible, there are some other cases where the seller is trying to save as much money as possible and may not be offering a commission to the buyer's agent. If 7.3.1 is checked, it does give your agent the ability to negotiate a commission on your behalf. Now, it doesn't mean that that seller, that for sale by owner, would accept it, but Having that box checked means that they can negotiate on your behalf to make sure that that agent does get paid. The other scenario where it may be good to have this box checked off is that if you find a house that you like and want to put an offer on and there's a discount brokerage that is offering a flat fee for that buyer's agent, which in many cases can be significantly less than that 2.5 or 3% commission that a buyer's agent typically sees. I have seen some discount brokerages offer a $2,500 flat fee for that buyer's agent. Having 7.3.1 checked off, again, does allow that buyer's agent to go to that listing agent and seller and try to negotiate something that's a little bit more advantageous. 7.3.2 says that the buyer will pay the buyer's agent's commission. This is if you are feeling extra generous and want to ensure that your buyer's agent does get paid and is taken care of. This is probably the less likely scenario as most sellers and listing agents do offer a quote unquote finder's fee or buyer's agent commission. 7.3.3 says that the seller and the listing agent may pay the fee, but the buyer is not obligated to pay the fee. Your buyer's agent may be okay with selecting this if both you and the buyer's agent know the house that you want to put an offer on does offer a commission that is being provided by the seller and the listing agent. Now that's a really good summary of the three sections that I think are really, really important to key into and have this open discussions about with your buyer's agent. The entire contract is incredibly important and important to understand, but in my opinion, those are the three that I think you should really, really key in to. Thanks so much for watching this video, and if you have not hit like or subscribe, please go ahead and do that because I'm publishing lots of valuable videos for you, the buyer and the seller, to help get you up to speed on in regards to buying and selling real estate. Thanks again, and see you on the next one.